Getting the first funding for the project. Altran brought engineers, Dassault Aviation technical backup, and above all, Solvay, whose founder was a friend of Bertrand's grandfather, became our first main partner. Christian Jourquin, CEO of Solvay, I have a question for you. Solvay has never made any sponsoring in the past. What made you decide to join such a challenging project? I would like to um, maybe to start with uh, what the uh, president of the uh, Polytechnic of Lausanne said about sustainability. And I would say we are embarked now for many years on uh, trying to position our company in really the frame of sustainability. That means working a lot on renewable energies, on storage of energy, certainly in trying to keep the value of fossil material for noble users and not just for burning. So when this project came through both of you, uh, for us it was quite natural that we would go and support it. I would say that's the first element. The second one, is that, well, it's a remarkable project when you have a lot of business units who are working on, I would say, pieces of projects to have such a nice project that can align the research within the company. And I would say when you are engaged, and that is the second main uh, point, in an innovation uh, move, well, you feel that it's possible to make free all the resources in a company and exactly as you said, uh, Bertrand, to let people dream. And last but not least, and that was what you said, uh, André, the long tradition between uh, your family and, uh, and Solvay. Uh, it's impressive, I believe, that your grandfather was uh, a part of the uh, uh, Solvay Congress of Physics in 1911 and then 11 uh, and uh, 30. So I would say we had three good reasons to support the project. Thank, Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. The impulse had been given. André could hire the first engineers and led a team working on the first concept. Peter Fry was already part of the team at that moment. After two years of work, we had enough confidence to launch the design of a first prototype. But of course, nothing could have moved further without another main partner. Omega responded, thanks to the pioneering spirit of the Hayek family. And we will never forget what Nick Hayek told us just before signing the contract of partnership. He said, I have no idea if your project is really feasible, but I know for sure I want to be with you to try and make it feasible. This is the spirit that we need in a project like this. And Steve Urquhart, the president of Omega, is very well placed to speak about it. Steve. It's not only about financial involvement. Could you explain to the audience what the uh, technological contribution of Omega has been in the project? Okay, first I'd like to come back to what Bertrand said about pioneering spirit. You know, I think one must not forget that this is a perfect match for Omega. We've been to the bottom of the ocean. We've been, you've talked about the moon before. We've been in space and on the moon celebrating this year the 40th anniversary. So when you came to see us a few years back, Bertrand, it was a, honestly a perfect match. Now, coming back to our involvement, obviously we decided that we would not just be a, 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 a partner, but like to get involved in the project. So we did two things. We developed with all our laboratories and ETA and all the factories and the techniques that we have. A test bench, which I think really helped you develop the plane and the, and the technology needed. 
And secondly, we also developed, I think, what is called the Omega instrument, which certain of the press will find out later, which hopefully will help you fly the plane in the future and be a, a, an added uh, asset to this. Omega is extremely happy to be involved in this project, which I think the word says inventing the, inventing the future, which I think we're all here for. And I wish really great success to the solar impulse for Switzerland, for Europe, and for the world. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You have probably noticed that when Audrey and I are talking, we always speak of partners and not sponsors. Firstly, because all of them are involved also with their knowledge and their expertise. And of course, also because we all share the same human values, the same spirit for a more sustainable future. Nowadays, there should of course be no more space for dogmatism, for conflicts between economy and ecology. Protecting the environment is vital, but it should also be profitable. Otherwise, nobody is going to commit himself to find the solutions and to change something in this world. Deutsche Bank, our third main partner, knows it already since the 1980s. And Joe Ackerman, CEO of Deutsche Bank, is going to talk a little bit about this to us. Joe, please come on stage with us. I think you're probably the best positioned here to explain to all of us how sustainable behaviors can be profitable for corporations and for the economy of this world. Well, let me start by congratulating Bertrand and André and the entire team for the success. You felt the enthusiasm in the project and to present uh, this uh, airplane today is a huge success for all of us. Uh, I just traveled uh, in Japan, in China, in the US, and in Scandinavia in the last uh, 10 days, and everybody asked the same question. Where should growth come from after the financial crisis? And the answer you hear everywhere in the world is from the renewable energy, from innovation, from climate change products, from something which we don't know yet. And you want to have a brand also as a bank and as a corporation to be part of that forward-looking statement and of that uh, uh, probably dream. Secondly, it is very important also for many products because you are investing in this sort of uh, uh, behavior. Shareholders are asking whether a company is contributing to sustainability. But let me add one very important point, which in my view is the most important one. Especially banking is a people's business and you want to have the best talents everywhere in the world. And young people more and more ask you in their first interviews about what do you do for sustainability? What are your ethical standards? And to be able to say we are sponsoring certain products and certain ventures which are certainly challenging and maybe even somewhat risky, but who add to the a better living going forward is a tremendous asset. And that's the main reason we did it. And we are very happy about it. Thank you, Joe, to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Well, you understand better now what is the key role of all those partners for a project like Solar Impulse. Well, all the main partners are with us today, which we really appreciate, and all those people will be available for you in the second part of this press conference for interview. Now, I'd like to come back to a date. The date is the 5th of November, 2007, and all the partners of Solar Impulse remember that particular day. Why? Because it was the day when 